For more anatomy related videos please subscribe to my channel, Learn with Dr. Tanya Hashik. Hello everyone, in this video we will continue the anatomy of the stomach. So today we will discuss about the peritoneal relations, the visceral relations, blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatic drainage etc of the stomach. So first we will discuss about the peritoneal relation. So what is the peritoneum? Peritoneum means it is a covering. It is a serous covering which covers the abdominal structures. So abdominal structures it is present within the peritoneal cavity. So we will discuss about the peritoneal cavity in another class. So today we will only discuss about the peritoneal relation of the stomach. So the stomach it is covered anteriorly and posteriorly by a layer of peritoneum and this two layers it meets at the lesser curvature and it becomes continuous with the lesser omentum. So the cover the covering that is the peritoneal covering of the anterior and the posterior layer of the stomach it becomes continuous with the lesser omentum at the lesser curvature and at the greater curvature continues as a greater omentum. So at the greater curvature it continues as the greater omentum. And near to the fundus of the stomach, this is the fundus of the stomach, the two layers of peritoneum that is the anterior and posterior layer, it joins to form the gastrosplenic ligament that is the gastrosplenic ligament. So the near to the fundus region the two layers it combines to form the gastrosplenic ligament and near to the cardiac portion of the stomach the posterior peritoneum posterior layer of peritoneum it reflects on the diaphragm to form the gastrophrenic ligament so there is a bare area of the stomach near to the posterior part of the fundus and in that area there is no peritoneum that is the diaphragm it is in direct contact with the stomach and that part is called as the bare area of the stomach. So it is near to the posterior surface of the fundus of the stomach there is a direct contact between the stomach and the diaphragm and that part is called as a bare area of the stomach and there is no peritoneum in that area. So now we will discuss about the visceral relations that is how the stomach is related to other abdominal structures. So anteriorly the stomach is related to liver. So this is the liver. So anteriorly the stomach is related to the liver, the diaphragm. So diaphragm it has got a dome shape. So if this is the stomach, the diaphragm it covers the stomach like this. So it is partially covered by the diaphragm. So, the stomach it is anteriorly and posteriorly related to the dome shaped diaphragm. So, diaphragm is another relation. It is also related to the transverse colon. In this figure you cannot see that transverse colon it is part of the transverse part of the large intestine that is transverse colon. So, it is also related to transverse colon and also the abdominal, anterior abdominal wall. So, it is also related to the anterior abdominal wall. So, these are the anterior relations. And superiorly, the diaphragm, this is the dome shaped diaphragm, it separates the stomach from the above. You can see the left pleura and also the pericardium. So, it separates the stomach from the left pleura the pericardium and also 6th to 9th ribs. So next is the posterior relations. Posterior relations means the structures which are related posteriorly to the stomach. So it forms a bed of the stomach. So all the structures of the which forms a bed it is separated from the stomach by means of the lesser sac. We will go in detail about the lesser sac when we discuss about the peritoneal cavity. So the posterior bed it is formed by the diaphragm you can I have already said that diaphragm it is related anteriorly and posteriorly and there is the left kidney posterior to the stomach 
so there is a left ki kidney and also the left suprarenal gland so left suprarenal gland next is the transverse mesocolon it is also related to the transverse mesocolon and also the splenic flexure of the colon and also splenic artery so it is posteriorly related to the diaphragm the left kidney left suprarenal gland the pancreas transverse mesocolon splenic flexure of the colon and also the splenic artery so these are the posterior relations so now we'll discuss about the blood supply of the stomach so the lesser curvature of the stomach it is supplied by the mainly by the left gastric artery and also the right gastric artery so this is a left gastric artery it is a branch from the celiac tract so it is a branch of the celiac tract so the left gastric artery it supplies the lesser curvature and it is also supplied by the right gastric artery so this is the right gastric artery it is a branch from the proper hepatic artery so this is the proper hepatic artery so it is uh, the right gastric artery it is a branch from the proper hepatic artery so these two arteries it supplies a lesser curvature of the stomach and the greater curvature of the stomach it is supplied by the right gastroepiploic artery and also the left gastroepiploic artery so the right gastroepiploic artery it is a branch from the gastroduodenal artery this is the gastroduodenal artery so the right gastroepiploic artery it is a branch from the gastroduodenal artery and the left gastroepiploic artery it also supplies the greater curvature and it is a branch from the splenic artery so this is the splenic artery so it is a branch from the splenic artery so the lesser curvature it is supplied by the left and right gastric artery which is a branch of the celiac tract and also the branch of the proper hepatic artery and the greater curvature it is supplied by the left and right gastroepiploic artery and the left gastroepiploic artery it is a branch of the splenic artery and the right gastroepiploic artery it is a branch from the gastroduodenal artery next is the venous drainage so veins of the stomach it mainly drains into the portal vein superior mesenteric vein and also the splenic veins so the venous drainage the stomach it mainly drains into the portal vein superior mesenteric vein and also the splenic veins so next is the lymphatic drainage so the lymphatic drainage it can be divided into four groups so that is the left upper one third left lower one third right upper two third and also the pyloric part so the left upper one third it drains into the pancreatico splenic nodes left lower one third it drains into the right gastroepiploic nodes and the right upper two third it drains into the left gastric nodes and the right lower to the that is the pyloric part it drains into the left gastric node the hepatic nodes and also the pyloric nodes and finally all of this it drains into the celiac nodes so the left upper one third it drains into the pancreatic splenic nodes the left lower one third it drains to the right gastroepiploic nodes and the right upper one th right upper two third it drains into the left gastric nodes and the pyloric part it drains into the left gastric node the hepatic nodes and the pyloric nodes and finally all of this drains into the celiac nodes so now we'll discuss about the nerve supply there is both sympathetic as well as the parasympathetic nerve supply sympathetic it is from the 6th to 10th thoracic segment of the spinal cord so it reaches through the greatest planking nerves celiac plexus as as well as the hepatic plexus so it reaches the uh, stomach through the greatest planking nerves celiac as well as the hepatic plexus so next is the parasympathetic nerve supply 
So next is the parasympathetic nerve supply. So the parasympathetic nerve supply it is mainly from the vagus nerve. So it reaches the stomach through the esophageal plexus and also the gastric nerves. So the anterior gastric nerves it mainly contains the left vagal fibers and the posterior gastric nerve it mainly contains the right vagal fibers. So the anterior gastric now it contains the left vagal fibers and the posterior gastric nerve it contains the right vagal fibers. So the parasympathetic nerve supply it is mainly from the vagus and it reaches the stomach through the esophageal plexus and also by the gastric nerve and the anterior gastric nerve it contains the left vagal fibers and the posterior gastric nerve it contains the right vagal fibers and the anterior gastric nerve it divides into different several branches that is the anterior gastric nerve it div it divides into several branches and it supplies the anterior surface of the fundus and body of the stomach and it also forms two pyloric branches which one supplies the pyloric antrum and another supplies the pyloric canal so the anterior gastric nerve it divides into several branches and it supplies the fundus as well as the body of the stomach and it also gives two pyloric branch which supplies which supplies the pyloric antrum and also the pyloric canal next is the posterior gastric nerve so the posterior gastric nerve it forms several smaller branches which supplies the fundus body and also the pyloric antrum that is the posterior surface of the fundus body and also the pyloric antrum and it forms a large branch for the celiac plexus and it forms a large branch for the celiac plexus so the posterior gastric nerve it supplies the posterior part of the fundus body and also the pyloric antrum and it forms a large branch for the celiac plexus so today we discussed about the visceral relations the peritoneal relations the blood supply nerve supply and the lymphatics of the stomach so first we discussed about the peritoneal relation so the stomach it is covered by anteriorly and posteriorly by the peritoneum and it continues with the greater as well as the lesser curvature of the stomach then we discussed about the visceral relations so anteriorly it is related to liver diaphragm etc and posteriorly it is related to several structures then we discussed about the blood supply so blood supply it is from the the lesser curvature it is supplied by the le left gastric artery and also the right gastric artery and the greater curvature it is supplied by the right gastroepiploic artery and also the left gastroepiploic artery then we discussed about the lymphatic drainage and the lymphatic drainage it is divided into four groups that is left upper one third left lower one third left right upper two third and right up lower two third and the left upper one third it drains into the pancreatic pancreaticosplenic lymph nodes left lower two third it drains to the right gastroepiploic nodes the right upper two third it drains into the left gastric nodes and the right lower two third it drains into the hepatic nodes the gas left gastric nodes and also the pyloric nodes and finally all of it drains into the celiac nodes and then we discussed about the nerve supply it has got both the sympathetic as well as the parasympathetic nerve supply sympathetic nerve supply it is from the 6th to 10th thoracic segments of the spinal cord and the parasympathetic it is from the vagus so this is the end of today's video this is the end of today's video for more videos please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon